Hey, what's up you guys? Today in this tutorial, I'll be showing people of all experience levels how to replicate this paper cutout effect using Photoshop. And if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below what you want me to make next. Alright, let's get into it. Okay, so after you've opened Photoshop, you're going to want to create a new document by going to the top left corner and clicking File, then pressing New. We're going to make the document 3000 by 3000 pixels and the resolution should be 72 pixels per inch. And next we're gonna make the color mode RGB. And once you've finished that, you're gonna to wanna to go to the top right corner and press OK. So first we're gonna uh, go to the color picker and type in a value. Uh, the hex value I am typing in is 73C0C8. Uh, this will create a light blue, and we're going to use that to make our background color. Uh, so to do this, we're going to go to our rectangle tool on the toolbar and bring it to the top left corner and press shift drag and drag it to the bottom right. Now to complete our background, we want to add texture, and to do this, I'm applying a pattern overlay to this layer. I've added a download link in the Google document that I've shared with you so you guys can download the same pattern that I'm using. Once you've downloaded this pattern, all you need to do is add it to your patterns library in Photoshop and double click it. So now that we're back in uh, Photoshop, click on the style icon and select pattern overlay. Uh, you're going to see this bubble pattern, which is not what we're going for. So you're just going to want to click that and select select the pattern in the bottom right. This should apply a paper looking texture to your background. Uh, so change the uh, blend mode from normal to linear burn and then make the opacity 30%. And after you finish that, go to the left panel and select gradient overlay. We're gonna change the blend mode from normal to overlay and take the opacity down uh, from 100 to 25 percent. The angle should be about 65 percent. And once you are done there, just press OK. So as you can see, we have a nice blue uh, paper styled background with light coming from the upper right corner. So next we're going to use the text tool. And before we type our word, uh, we're going to choose the color our word will have. To do this, uh, double click on the fill color to bring up the color picker, and after that, we're going to type in our hex value, which is FFA1B8 to get a nice light pink. Now press OK. Uh, you can use another color if you want, but I think this light pink looks good with the blue and uh, the size font and word choice doesn't really matter as it depends on your personal style but I'm using Britannic Bold with size 500 font and I'm typing the word PAPER in all caps. You can also place the word wherever you want to but I'm uh, centering it. So next we're going to create some layer groups to make sure everything stays organized. To do this you're going to want to select your background layer and press Control G. I've titled this layer group background but you can name it whatever you choose. So after that, select the word layer and press Control G. And I'm going to um, name this layer after I've just deleted this uh, lettering. I'm also going to rename the layer beneath it lettering. Uh, okay. So once you've finished that, we're going to Go to layer styles and click uh, bevel and emboss. Style can stay as inner bevel, but we want to change the size, which should be 250 pixels. And the softened value uh, will be 16 pixels. For the shading, you're going to want to add. Uh, you're going to want to uncheck the global light and type in negative 145 degree angle. The altitude can remain at 30 degrees 
and highlight mode can be changed to overlay and the color can stay as white. Uh, right, and change the opacity to 15%. Uh, shadow mode can be changed from multiply to linear burn. And we want to do for the color, what we want to do for the color is to use a, a darker color from the background. And um, so just go and select your background color and make it a little darker. And once you're happy with that, just press OK. And then the opacity should be taken down to 10%. So next we're going to go to Inner Shadow and change the blend mode from Multiply to Normal. Then we want to change our color and we want to do that and make it white. And uh, afterwards, we're going to take our opacity down to 20%. And for our angle, again, we're going to uncheck, use global light, and set the angle to negative 145 degrees. The distance should be one pixel, zero pixel for the choke, and again, one pixel for the size. We'll add 5% noise to add the gritty effect of the paper background. Next, click on pattern, pattern overlay. And again, click on the paper texture, which should be the last one to the right. Now, change the blend mode from, uh, sorry, not from, to linear burn. Take the opacity down to 50% and go down to drop shadow. Uh, next, we're going to change the blend mode from multiply to screen. Change the color to white again. Uncheck use global light once you're done. And then we're going to set the angle to negative 145 degrees and the distance should be one. The spread is zero and the size is one. Now add 5% noise and click OK once you've finished that. So as you can see, we've applied our paper effect to our text and we've added a very subtle bevel since we have a light source coming from the upper right corner. So we're gonna want to add light reflection onto the top right edges of our letters. To do this, we're going to duplicate our lettering layer by pressing Alt and dragging the layer up. Since we're adding new effects, we're going to delete the effects we have here by dragging them into the trash bin. To make sure everything is clean, we're going to create a layer group by pressing Control plus G. And I'm naming this group Text Effect. Then we'll set the fill to 0%. Next, in the layer style icon, select blending options. Make sure blend clipped layer as group is unchecked. Then select bevel and emboss. And change the style from inner bevel to outer bevel. Then change uh, the size from 50 pixels and below that to 16. Um, you're going to want to uncheck use global light and set the angle to 55 degrees and below that the altitude should be at zero. Then change the highlight mode from screen to overlay uh, and you're going to want to leave the color as white and take the opacity down to 45%. And shadow mode should be placed at zero. Now go to Inner Shadow and make the mode Overlay instead of Multiply. And we're going to leave, we're going to make the color white. Uh, after that you're going to want to uncheck Use Global Light and make the angle negative 145 degrees. 
And now the distance can be made one. The choke, zero, and the size, one. And noise can be made 5%. Now go to drop shadow once you're done that. So we're gonna change the blend mode to overlay and make sure the color is white. After that, uncheck use global light. And make the angle negative 145 degrees. The, uh, the distance should be 100 pixels, spread is zero and 100 pixels for size. And since everything is a little too bright, we now want to change the opacity to 15%. Now, as you can see, we've added some light reflection to the upper right edges of our letters, which gives it the illusion that the paper is flipping up as it would do if it were cut through. And we still need to add some depth. So to do this, we're going to add some shadows by duplicating the lettering uh, layer by holding the Alt key and dragging the layer up. And again, uh, we're going to go and discard the effects and add new ones. So after that, you're going to want to press on the layer style icon and select bevel and emboss. So first we're changing the style to outer bevel. Then change the size to 38 or 39 pixels. And we're going to make the soften value zero. Uh, once again, uncheck use global light and make the angle negative 145 degrees and make sure the altitude is 35 degrees. In highlight mode, we're going to bring the opacity to zero and keep the shadow mode with its settings at multiply and the color should be black. And we want to make the opacity 25%. And once you've done that, press okay. Now we want to apply a shadow to the interior of our lettering and to do this we're going to want to select our lettering layer and move it down and left using the arrows on our keyboard. After that you're going to want to select the layer and apply it to the underneath layer by keeping alt pressed and placing your cursor in between the layers until a little box with arrow appears and when it does you're going to want to click. So now that our layers have a more precise shadow separating both the sheets of paper. The shadow is still a little bit too sharp and we're going to want to go to filter in the top left corner of the screen. Uh, and then go to blur and select Gaussian blur. Now the shadow, shadow is visibly more diffused and natural looking but it's still far too subtle, so we're going to increase the opacity and the radius of the shadow by gradually duplicating this layer. So here I accidentally alt-clicked, but you're, you're supposed to alt and drag it first and apply it to the underneath layer after by alt and clicking. Um, and again, after that, you're going to want to go to filter and blur and press Gaussian blur and we'll make the radius six pixels this time. When you're done that, press OK. And we're gonna repeat the same process, so duplicate this layer by pressing Alt and dragging it, and apply it to the underneath layer with Alt and clicking. And go to Filter, then go to Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Make the value eight pixels, and press OK. And again, duplicate the layer, apply it to the underneath layer, and go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And we're gonna make the radius 10, 10 pixels this time. So copy this layer, apply it to the underneath, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're going to make the radius 20 pixels. And we're gonna do it one last time. Uh, so alt drag, alt click, uh, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, but this time I am going to make it 30 pixels. Our paper effect is starting to come along, but we still need to do more. 
and next we're going to go down to the layer style icon and select satin. We want to change the blend mode from multiply to soft light and make the color white. Okay, now let's make the opacity 20% and make the angle 45 degrees. For these two values, we're going to set the distance to 90 pixels and then to 90 pixels as well and change the contour to the first option on the left. And after that, you're going to want to click the anti-aliased box and press OK. So as you can see, we're starting to have a nice paper cut effect. We want to add just a little more depth by applying some shadows to the exterior of our lettering and to do this we just want to create a new layer and make sure to place it right underneath this one here so we want to select our word by keeping control plus and pressed and clicking the layer and as you can see if it worked our lettering should now be selected So next we're going to bring up our fill menu and to do this you're going to want to select our new layer and press fill. Now once you've done that you want to select color and we're going to choose a darker shade than our background blue. So I'm going to just drag this over here and this is the dark blue. I'm gonna go with so now press OK and now we're just gonna move the layer we just created by using our arrows on our keyboard and pressing down and left and when you're done that uh, right click on the layer and select convert to smart object then we're gonna want to go to filter in the top left corner press blur or just go to Gaussian blur and then change the radius from 30 to 10 pixels to take away some of the intensity of our shadow. We're gonna go to the opacity and make it 25%. And 25. And finally, we're gonna change the blending mode from normal to multiply. That's it everyone, you've completed your text effect. I hope you guys found this tutorial informative as well as entertaining. Thanks for watching, please make sure to check out some of the previous videos I've made on this channel if you want to learn more about Photoshop.